It's time for dinner. We are at Exodus chapter 24. And to Moshe he said, Come up to Jehovah, you and Aharon, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and you shall bow yourselves from a distance. But Moshe shall draw near to Jehovah by himself, and let them draw near, nor let the people go up with him. And Moshe came and related to the people all the words of Jehovah, and all the right rulings. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Jehovah has spoken we shall do. And Moshe wrote down all the words of Jehovah, and rose up early in the morning, and built a slaughter place at the foot of the mountain, and twelve standing columns for the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, and they offered ascending offerings and slaughtered slaughterings of peace offerings to Jehovah of bulls. And Moshe took half the blood and put it in basins, and half the blood he sprinkled on the slaughter place. And he took the book of the covenant to read in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that Jehovah has spoken we shall do and obey. And Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, See, the blood of the covenant which Jehovah has made with you concerning all these words. And Moshe went up with Aharon, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Yisrael. And they saw the Elohim of Yisrael, and under his feet, like a paved work of sapphire stone, and like the heavens for brightness. Yet he did not stretch out his hand against the chiefs of the Elohim of Yisrael. And they saw Elohim, and they ate and drank. And Jehovah said to Moshe, Come up to me on the mountain. Yet he did not stretch out his hand against the chiefs of the children of Yisrael. And they saw Elohim, and they ate and drank. And Jehovah said to Moshe, Come up to me on the mountain and be here, while I give you tablets of stone, and the Torah, and the command, which I have written to teach them. And Moshe arose with his assistant, Yehoshua, and Moshe went up to the mountain of Elohim. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you, and see, Aharon and Hur are with you. Whoever has matters, let him go to them. And Moshe went up to the mountains, and a cloud covered the mountain. And the esteem of Jehovah dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moshe out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the esteem of Jehovah was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain before the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moshe went into the midst of all the cloud and went up into the mountain. And it came to be that Moshe was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. And Jehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they take up a contribution from me. From everyone whose heart moves him, you shall take up my contribution. And this is the contribution which you take up from them, gold and silver and bronze, and blue and purple and scarlet material and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skin dyed red and fine leather and acacia wood oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. Shoham stones, and stones to be set in the shoulder garment and in the breastplate, and they shall make me a set-apart place, and I shall dwell in their midst. According to all that I show you, the pattern of the dwelling place and the pattern of all its furnishings make it exactly so. And they shall make an ark of acacia wood, two 
and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. And you shall overlay it with clean gold, inside and outside. You shall overlay it, and you shall make on it a molding of gold all around. And you shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in its four corners, two rings on one side and two rings on the other side. And you shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, and shall put the holes into the rings on the sides of the ark to lift up the ark by them. The poles are in the rings of the ark. They are not taken from it. And into the ark you shall put the witness which I give you. And you shall make a lid of atonement of gold, clean gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. You shall make two cherubim of gold, uh, make them of beaten work at the two ends of the lid of atonement. And make one carob at one end, and the other carob at the other end. Make the carabim from the lid of atonement at its two ends. And the carabim shall be spreading out their wings above, covering the lid of atonement with their wings, with their faces toward each other. The faces of the carabim turn toward the lid of the atonement, and you shall put the lid of atonement on the top of the ark, and put into the ark the witness which I give you. And I shall meet with you there, and from above the lid of atonement, from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the witness, I shall speak to you all that which I command you concerning the children of Israel. And you shall make a table of acacia wood, two cubits long, and a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high, and you shall overlay it with clean gold, and shall make a molding of gold all around. And shall make for it a rim of a hand breadth all around, and shall make a gold molding for the rim all around. And you shall make for it four rings of gold, and put the rings of the four corners that are it at its four legs. The rings are close to the rim, as holders for the poles to lift the table. And you shall make the poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold, and the table shall be lifted with them. And you shall make its dishes, and its ladles, and its jars, and its bowls for pouring, make them of clean gold. And you shall put the showbread on the table before me continually. And you shall make a lampstand of clean gold. The lampstand is made of beaten work. Its base and its shaft, its cups, its ornamental knobs and blossoms are from it. And six branches shall come out of its side. Three branches of the lampstand out of one side and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side. Three cups made like almond flowers on one branch with ornamental knob and blossom. And three cups made like almond flower on the other branch with ornamental knob and blossom. So for the six branches come out of the lampstand. And on the lampstand itself are four cups made like almond flowers with ornamental knob and blossom. And a knob under the first two branches of the same and a knob under the second two branches of the same, and a knob under the third two branches of the same, according to the six branches coming out of the lampstand. Their knobs and their branches are of the same, all of it one beaten work of clean gold. And you shall make seven lamps for it, and they shall mount its lamps so that they give light in front of it. And its snuffers and their trays are of clean gold. It is made of a talent of clean gold with all these utensils. So see and do according to the pattern which was shown to you on the mountain. And make the dwelling place with ten curtains of fine woven linen and blue and purple and scarlet material. Make them with cherubim, the work of a skilled workman. The length of each curtain is twenty-eight cubits, 
and the width of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains have one measure. Five curtains are joined to each other, and five curtains are joined to each other. And you shall make loops of blue on the edge of the end curtain on one set, and do the same on the edge of the end of the curtains on the second set. Make 50 loops in the one curtain, and make 50 loops on the edge of the end curtain of the second set, the loops being opposite to each other. And you shall make 50 hooks of gold, and shall join the curtains together with the hooks, and the dwelling place shall be one. And you shall make curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the dwelling place. Make e 11 curtains. The length of each curtain is 30 cubits, and the width of each curtain 4 cubits, one measure to the 11 curtains. And you shall join the five curtains by themselves and the six curtains by themselves, and you shall double over the six curtains at the front of the tent. And you shall make 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the set, and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain of the second set. And you shall make 50 bronze hooks, and put the hooks into the loops, and join the tent together, and it shall be one. And the other overlapping part of the rest of the curtains of the tent the half curtain that remains shall hang over the back of the dwelling place. And a cubit on one side and a cubit on the other side of what remains of the length of the curtains of the tent is to hang over the sides of the dwelling place on this side and on that side to cover it. And you shall make a covering of ram skin dyed red for the tent and a covering of fine leather above that and for the dwelling place, you shall make the boards of acacia wood standing up. Then ten cubits is the length of a board, and a cubit and a half the width of a board each. Two tenons in each board for binding one to another do the same for all the boards of the dwelling place. And you shall make the boards for the dwelling place. Twenty boards for the south side, and make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under each of the boards for its two tenons, and for the second side of the dwelling place on the north side, twenty boards, and there are forty sockets of silver to sockets under each of the boards, and for the extreme parts of the dwelling place westward, make six boards and make two boards for the two back corners of the dwelling place. And they are double beneath the sim similarly, they are complete to the top, to the one ring. So it is for both of them. They are for the two corners. And they shall be eight boards in their sockets of silver, 16 sockets, two sockets under the one board and two sockets under the other board, and you shall make bars of acacia wood, five for the boards on the one side of the dwelling place, and five bars for the boards on the other side of the dwelling place, and five bars for the boards of the side of the dwelling place for the extreme parts westward. With the middle bar in the midst of all the bar boards going through from end to end, and overlay the boards with gold, and make their rings of gold as holders for the bars, and overlay the bars with gold. And you shall raise up the dwelling place according to its pattern, which you were shown on the mountain. And you shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet material, and fine woven linen, the work of a skilled workman, make with cherubim. And you shall put it on the four columns of acacia wood, overlaid with gold, their hooks of gold upon four sockets of silver. And you shall hang the veil from the hooks, and shall bring the ark of the witness there behind the veil. And the veil shall make a separation for you between the set-apart and the most set-apart place. And you shall put the lid of atonement upon the ark of the witness in the most set-apart place. And you shall set the table outside the veil 
and the lampstand opposite the table on the side of the dwelling place toward the south and put the table on the north side. And you shall make a covering for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine woven linen made by a weaver. And you shall make for the covering fine columns of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, their hooks of gold. And you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. And you shall make a slaughtering place of acacia wood, five cubits long and five cubits wide. The slaughtering place is square, in its height three cubits. And you shall make its horns on its four corners. Its horns are of the same, and you shall overlay it with bronze. And you shall make its pots to receive its ashes, and its shovels, and its basins, and its forks, and its fire holders make all its utensils of bronze. And you shall make a grating for it, a bronze network, and shall make on the network four bronze rings at its four corners, and shall put it under the rim of the slaughter place beneath, so that the network is halfway up the slaughter place. And you shall make poles for the slaughter place, poles of acacia wood, and shall overlay them with bronze. And the poles shall be put in the rings, and the poles shall be on the two sides of the slaughter place for lifting it. Make it hollow with boards, as it was shown to you on the mountain. So they are to make it, and you shall make the courtyard of the dwelling place. For the south side screens for the courtyard made of fine woven linen 100 cubits long for one side, and its 20 columns and their 20 sockets of bronze and hooks of the columns and their bands of silver. And so for the north side in length screens 100 cubits long with its 20 columns and their 20 sockets of bronze and the hooks of the columns and their bands of silver and the width of the courtyard on the west side screens of 50 cubits with their 10 columns and their 10 sockets and the width of the courtyard on the east side 50 cubits and the screens on the one side of the gate 15 cubits with their three columns and three sockets and on the other side screens of 15 cubits and their three columns and their three sockets and for the gate of the courtyard a covering 20 cubits long of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine woven linen made by a weaver, four columns and four sockets. All the columns around the courtyard have bands of silver, their hooks silver and their sockets bronze. The length of the courtyard is 100 cubits and the width 50 by 50 and the height five cubits woven of fine linen, thread, and its sockets of bronze. <clears throat> all the utensils of the dwelling place for all its services, all its pegs, and all the pegs of the courtyard are bronze. And you are to command the children of Yisrael to bring you clear oil of pressed olives for the light, to cause the lamp to burn continually in the tent of appointment outside the veil, which is before the witness, Aharon and his sons are to tend it from evening until morning before Jehovah, a law forever to their generations from the children of Yisrael. I believe from this chapter we learn that God definitely is a God of great attention to detail. And I suppose you would have to be, to be the creator of heaven and earth and the universe and the ocean and bugs and wow yeah attention to detail